Okay, I think I'm recording. 5.1, triangles. Hopefully you remember some stuff from last semester. The workplace 20, we had uh, these skills. Well, we'll look at them right now. If you have a right triangle, and that's what we're going to be working with in this section, you can use this Pythagorean theorem. You guys see the poster off on the side there. We've used that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That letter C has to be the hypotenuse. And you guys remember this formula, right? Okay. How to use it. The other thing I hope you remember, sine, cosine, and tangent. What's a quick way to remember these things? That sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent side. Now remember those words, right? Hypotenuse is across from the right angle. The opposite side is opposite whatever angle you're dealing with. Right? Adjacent is the leg that is right beside it. It's not the hypotenuse, but the leg that's right beside the angle. Now, a quick way to remember this, need to, is so ka toa. If you say it like that, so ka toa, just put that above. What does that mean, though? That means it's a quick way to remember that sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. That's Sokotoa. That's just a quick way to help you remember. I don't think I used that last time, right, because I always gave you the formulas. We're going to try to internalize this Sokotoa. I'll say it a few times, and it'll help you get going on this. Now, that means you've got the three trig, I, the trig um, identities you could use, trig rules, trig, yeah, I'm saying the wrong thing, trig ratios. You could use any of those three trig ratios, sine of an angle, cosine or tangent of an angle, or the Pythagorean theorem. Which one? Do you want to cal calculate the length of side A here? Which one of the things can you use? Can you use a trig ratio or do you have to use Pythagorean? Well, trig ratios are used if you want to find angles or are given angles. You have no angle here or there, right? So that means you have to use Pythagorean. And it just so happens that this is the hypotenuse. It's called the letter A, but it's not the A squared in the original expression. Right? This is the hypotenuse. So that means a squared is equal to, and it's always the, the legs are the side that's connected to the uh, right angle on the other side. So 7.6 squared plus 9.4 squared. I'll make that look like a plus sign. Now, does that confuse anyone? All back, coming back to you? Okay. You actually use your calculator, and I've done it. So to go through this example, 7.6 squared plus the 9.4 squared, you'd use your calculator to do that. And when you add it up, it's 100. I guess I'll put this in here. 146.12. Then the question is, how do you solve, that's A squared. How do you solve for A on calculator? You can't divide anything here because there's nothing, you know, it's 1a squared here. There's nothing to divide by. So you ask yourself, what's the opposite of taking a square? Square root button. That's that check marky thing. Use this button. And yeah, it's going to be a little over 12. You bet. A is equal to, and as you said, 12.1 centimeters. I went with decimal one because you notice the numbers that were given also went to a tenth decimal place, one behind the decimal. Okay. So that's what this side is right here. Now that's kind of review. It is review, not kind. Of. Take a look at the next page here with the We'll work through a couple of trig ratios and see how we remember, how well we remember this.
So here we want a length, w. We have an angle. So we're going to use one of the trig rules, right? What you should do, though, when you see this 41 degrees here, out of the sides, what do we call the 4.2 side connected to 41 degrees here? This 4.2, is this adjacent, hypotenuse, or opposite? Well, just think in, in real life here, opposite means exactly what it does if I say it's opposite the room. This is the opposite side, right? So, we're not interested in that one, but that is the opposite side. What is the 4.2 going to be then? Adjacent. And adjacent means right beside it, and it has to be a leg. When I say a leg, by the way, I'm talking this. And this, those are both legs because they're connected to the right angle. So the leg that is adjacent is connected to the 41 degrees. So this is my adjacent side. And the side I want is called the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. Now it's important that I at least know this in my head, and you might as well write it out. Which is hypotenuse, which is adjacent, which is opposite. Because, I'm going to say in my mind, so katoa, sine is so, S-O-H. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I can't use the sine one here because we don't have the opposite. We have adjacent. So, ka cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Yep, adjacent, hypotenuse, ka cosine. That's the one I'm going to use. Last year you always had that, and you'd look it up there, but... This is a way to remember, so, ka, and then toa. And you were thinking, yes? Okay. So what I'm going to write down is exactly that. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Right? That's just the rule directly as it, you know, from the front sheet and so on. Now let's replace this here with some things in the cosine of 41 is equal to, in this case, our adjacent is the 4 decimal 2 meters. So I'll just put 4.2. And in this case, we're calling our hypotenuse the letter W. Do you guys remember what we would do next? You need a calculator. You need to make sure it's on what we call degree mode. You'll see DEG. Sometimes it's on rad mode. Really. Do calculators? So if you don't have a degree calculator, get one for this assignment. And you press that in, and I'm going to put 7547 is what you get as a decimal. Do you guys know how to solve that equation? If you need to, you can do something to make it look easier to solve. Do you remember what you did if you didn't like what you had there? Yeah. If it makes it easier, you can put this out of one if it helps you solve it. I'll give you guys a second to solve it. You got an answer to you? You do, don't you, Faith? Okay, you got five point five point five six. Let's call it just five decimal six then. We'll round it to you know how this is to one decimal place. Let's call this one W equals five decimal six. And that is in meters. Good work, young lady. What do I want to find here? Angle E. Okay. You notice with this one here, you want this angle right here, right? I have to make it that big. But... So if I'm trying to find that, 
What would you call 2.8, that side? That's the opposite. What is this 3.9? Hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse. So, opposite, hypotenuse, Sokotoa. It's definitely not tangent, opposite over adjacent. It's the so, S O H. It's the sine of an angle. So, in this case, it's the sine of E. Why am I putting E there? Because that's the one we're trying to find. It says so, right? It's the opposite over the hypotenuse. I can actually then find sine of E is equal to, opposite is 2.8. The uh, hypotenuse is 3.9. They're matching units, so you can just do that. Then you can actually type that in and crunch it out. 0.7179 if you divide. 2.8 divided by... Once you have that, you guys remember how you undo this? How you find the angle inside there? Because there's no division. You remember? Nope. No square roots here. Do you remember how you undo this on your calculator? And you'll need one of these. You'll need the one that Jasmine has a calculator, right? Look at you. And Tony has your other one. And he has my calculator, old nasty, too. Tony! That's what I was saying. Anyways, um, do you have your calculator in front of you? You notice what's right above the second function button? Like, I mean, when you look at sine and cosine, you see that little minus one thingy? That's to undo this. Is this coming back to you now? No? Okay, well... Yeah, E equals the sine negative 1 of 0.7179. It's called the inverse, but in this case. 46. Yeah, rounded properly. E is equal to 46. Now, we'll have to take care of that little Tony. Hey there, Mr. O. What aren't we doing? That right. Yeah, well, sure. Interior angle got up to 180 degrees. This guy knows his stuff when it comes yeah, to channels. Nice. You are being recorded right now, you see. I was just reading a little bit. Um, on Thursday, yep. uh, coach is coming to meet with me and Eric Jackson. Is that okay? Thursday it is. Yeah, yeah, sure. What? So that's during that morning. Is that what you're saying? Two o'clock. For two o'clock. Oh, physics. Oh, physics. Yeah. Okay, yep. Eric, go on. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't Eric. know how long it will be. In football okay. meeting, okay. But he won't be Mark Gadsden, that's for sure. Okay. You All betcha. Right. Thank you. Yep. Here's April 2nd. Back to the lesson of the day. Is it making some sense now? To undo a sine, to undo a cosine, you use that second function button. If you look up there, there too, I've got an example on the board with second function tan. You see that last thing on there? Reminding you how that works in some calculators. So, that is actually all review, but I didn't expect you to remember everything. So what is new? Actually, I don't think you'll find this too difficult, but we've got some vocabulary words to figure out. The properties of triangles. Okay. They're, we know what properties are. The things that make things, why is it different than others? Anyways. What properties describe a triangle? Well, this is grade one here, right? Three sides. We knew that. It's a closed figure, meaning you can't have three sides like this. That's not a triangle, right? And the, Mr. Olenek was just saying, the sum of the interior angles equals 180. We should read that right off the sheet. There. Anyways. And we did know those things, I think. But what about, you can classify a triangle two different ways. You could say by the angles it has. If all the angles are smaller than 90, and it looks like this, we call it an acute triangle. Acute little triangle. It's a right triangle 
if we have one angle with a perfect corner on 90 degrees. That's a right triangle. And it could be long and skinny. As long as that's a perfect corner, a 90 degree corner, that's a right triangle, right? And if one angle is bigger, like this is, then one, one angle is bigger than 90 degrees, that's called an obtuse triangle. So you should be able to look, and I should be able to do something here. So if I get this, what does this look like, T? Kind of looks, which one? I guess I didn't make it, well, I wouldn't say, I didn't make it uh, too obvious, because I've not given good measurements here. How's this one here? And I'll put a little doohickey in there. That's a right triangle. Now, if I get this one here, that's pretty obvious then. It's, yeah, it's obtuse because I have this really big angle. Right? They're all small ones. It's a cute. Okay, so that's what you're going to need to know. You're also going to need to know by sides. If all three sides are equal, that's equilateral. E Isosceles triangles is, is like a lot of rooftops. Two sides are equal, right? That's, and by the way, what do you notice about an equilateral triangle? All three angles are the same, because eh? the sides are the same? Angles are the same. If on an isosceles triangle, two sides are the same? Two angles have to be the same, too. Right? Lastly, a scalene triangle is a mixed match of different sides. Three different lengths of sides. And you can have triangles of all different angles types. You can have right triangles that are scaling. You can have obtuse triangles that are scaling and so on. What's that? The Illuminati one with the eyeball in the middle? Oh, you don't want to know. Well, the secrets, man. Hey. That's, that's right. Use the following diagram to answer some questions here. Let's just take a look at this diagram. It's not as complicated as you might think. Some of it is. Some of it is. Let me see here. Uh, side BC. Oh, crap. It is bigger. First of all, do you see what this here and this here, you know what those mean? They're the same. The same. Not that they ask, but side C. Here is actually yeah, 20 centimeters. That's what I meant by side C. This is small C right there. There's a small B there. There's an angle. The, the angles are always with capital letters. Huh? But we're wondering about this length from big B to big C. That's what we're trying to find. Now, that's going to be a doozy to just do on its own. But what can you know about, or what can you know? What would you, uh, this distance X here, how does that compare to the full distance BC? It's cut in half because this isosceles triangle, right, cuts, it's like a rooftop, it cuts it in half. So if we find this size X and double it, we should be in business, right? And we will. Because, and I'm going to just draw that out on the side here. So if I'm going to do this, what's the length side BC? I'm actually going to just look like this. 20, 16 is this height. This is what I want to know. And then I can double that. I don't have an angle though. How could I find that angle in the corner? Doesn't it make sense since the isosceles triangle? This has to be 53 as well, right? It's 53 degrees. I don't know if we need it, but we've got all kinds of options to solve for x. You could use a trig function or you could use Pythagorean theorem. Let's go with Pythagorean theorem. It's a good old fashioned Pythagorean. So x is what we want to find. Which is the hypotenuse though? 16, 20, or x? 
I think hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So that's the 20 squared equals is what we're going to have to use with this. We're going to go like this. 20 squared, so this is c squared, equals a squared plus b squared. Well, that's x squared plus 16 squared. Then 20 squared is 400. X squared, well, we can't do that. But X times X. Uh, 256. Then we've got to get the X squared alone. How do you get the X squared alone? Well, if X squared is being... Uh, if 256 is adding to 2, you know, that's what this is, right? What's the opposite of adding? Subtract. So you're going to subtract both sides from the equation, right? And you do that. 400 minus 200 is 200. Minus 56, 144. 144. It's equal to x squared. So you have to do subtraction in this case to get the x squared along. Then, and only then, you can use the square root button. Square root button? Yeah, the old check mark that undoes squaring. We talked about it earlier. When you do that one, trust me on this. Oh, no, trust faith on this. You got it? It's a perfect 12, isn't it? Oh, yours might be hit the square root button first, then 144. I don't know. You got 12. Perfect. That's only half the distance, so remember. So then BC, what do you got to do with that 12 to get BC then? Double. Yeah. I think you could do that in your head. 24 centimeters. Hmm. Now, calculate A, B, C, or calculate, classify A, B, C. That's this triangle. By angle measure. So, with angle measure, you got um, acute, obtuse, and right triangle. It doesn't look like it's a right triangle, does it? The big triangle. 53 and 53, what do we call that then? Well, what's this third angle? Actually, it's kind of hard to see. It might add up to 90. It might be a little bit big. How can you find out what the angle is? Angle A is. Sure you do. What do all three angles add up to? 180. So angle A would be 180, subtracting the other side, or other angles. 53 minus 53. Six, so 180 minus 106 is 74. So, is this an acute or an obtuse triangle? Obtuse has to have one side bigger than 90, and we don't. So, an obtuse triangle, no, so. I'm sorry? What is acute? Mean? Acute means smaller than 90, all three of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no, you can't. It would be a square, right? Or a rectangle. And you'd have to have a fourth side. Um, so this is an acute triangle. As far as angles are concerned, it's an acute triangle. And what about sides? You classify this according to the sides? I already mentioned this earlier. We've got two sides equal. What does that mean this has to be? What do we call that? Isosceles, scalene, or uh, equilateral? No. Well, the first one I said or the first one on the list? The first one on the list. Equilateral? Yeah. What was this side right here? BC. 24. 
20 and 20. Definitely not equilateral, not all three sides the same. So 20, 20, two sides the same. It's isosceles. Scalene would mean three sides totally different. So according to the sides, this is a isosceles trend. And that, my folks, is what we have time for. I have a last example on there. Should I try it in the next six minutes? Yeah, I might as well get it done with, eh? We'll do some of it anyways. And asymmetrical, so that it's not, the roof isn't cut perfectly uh, in a mirror image. You can notice that the triangle is bigger on this side than that side. Asymmetrical roof on a shed has sections 18 and 14 feet long. Has a rise of six feet. It's all labeled on that diagram. How wide is the building? So basically, you want from B to D. That's how wide the building is, right? 25 feet as an angle. It doesn't. That's 25 is the angle. Rats, if it was only that easy. But do you see that? It's really this triangle's base plus this triangle's base. C and D plus B and C, right? you got two things to figure out. This one and this one. So, B plus C plus width. Um, let's see this one. So how wide is it? I guess we'd say BC plus CD. That's going to be the width, right? That's what we're trying to do. So we've got to divvy this up into two separate triangles. Um, do you think? Which one do you guys want to do first? The one on the left? Yeah, let's go with that one. So, the one on the left. So BC is what I'm going to find here. Um, I just draw this out so I know what I'm solving here. Six. 18, this is BC. Which theory can you use? Because there's no angles given for this that we need to use. So you've got to use Pythagorean. You can say, well, BC squared plus 6 squared equals 18 squared. Do you guys follow where I'm at on that one? Does that make sense why I'm doing this Pythagorean theory? Because I've got two sides and I want a third side on the right triangle. Now, this is 36. 18 squared is 324. So you're going to work those out. And subtract to get BC squared all by itself. Get an answer for that and then take the square root. Okay? I'll just write this down before I forget. Which part are you thinking about? You, this step, do you know? Yeah, after that. Okay? I said, because I squared this and it's BC plus 36. The opposite of adding 36 is subtracting. So I'm going to subtract it onto that side. Lastly, I hit the square root button. And the old beggar comes out to be 17. I think this is feet, so I'll use that old fashioned tick mark. Then the right hand side triangle to get CD. I'll write that up. This one has an angle, so 25, 6, and 14. But we can use the Pythagorean theorem again. It's the easiest way. You could use the sine or cosine or tangent, depending on which one works too. But CD squared almost looks like the other one, plus 6 squared equals 14 squared. I'll work those out the same way. 
I'll skip one step here because the 36 you're going to subtract over. Okay. Trust me on this. Take the square root of both sides. And 12.6 is what I got. That means that the width is the two out of together. And what is that? 29.6. That's a lot of stuff at once. Hey Lloyd, you did make it, eh? When did you make it? <laughs> Just in the last three minutes or something? 145. Okay, I have you marked as absent. You're here for 15 minutes. 20 minutes, you're right. Does it change your life if you're here marked late or absent? Okay. Because you really already marked it down. Um, this, you can tell by looking probably that these are right triangles. The big triangle looks to be obtuse. They're scalene because they're different sized. That's the B part. Have a good afternoon, and you got a lot to work on now. Stop this recording. Test. Okay, good.